Dr. Hanbei in her uh, moving and uh, poignant uh, reminder gave some indication of the depth of feeling both within official and community circles as, as to how Turks around the world uh, met the news of this atrocious act. Malik Bey of the Advocacy Alliance uh, touched upon how we as Turkish Australians felt when the news filtered through to us. I was 10, I can remember that day clearly. I have spoken about it on previous occasions. Every Turkish Australian was in fear for their lives. I and my brother were taken out of school. Nobody knew who or where we may next be targeted simply for the fact of our Tur Turkish heritage. Uh, <coughs> because I'm a lawyer, uh, I tend to look for definitions. Uh, because this word terrorism is bandied around a bit and possibly a bit too much. Uh, terrorism and terrorist acts are defined almost uniform, uniformly as acts of violence done with the intention of advancing a political, religious or ideological cause by means of coercing or influencing a government or a section of the public. And on any measure, the terrible acts carried out by those gunmen on this day 36 years ago uh, clearly fell within that definition. But if you listen carefully, uh, the more prescient amongst us will notice that no particular religion is specified, nor is terrorism li limited to any one particular group or nationality. There is no attempt to set out a hierarchy of terrorism uh, or to suggest that some acts of terrorism are somehow justified or explicable. Yet, as a Turkish Australian, I cannot help but feel that over time some terrorist acts are, if not excused, certainly seen as somehow more understandable than others. The Turkish community around the world, unfortunately, is no stranger to terrorist acts committed against them and their representatives by people who think they can kill and destroy in, an, in order to advance their own political ends. We're all aware that we're standing here at the site and, and on the anniversary of just one such occasion. Uh, the two men who were doing no more than leaving their home to go to work were mown down in a hail of gunfire by masked terrorists who described themselves as part of a secret army or as justice commandos. Some justice. And what was it supposedly for? A dispute over the legal characterization of events that occurred on the other side of the world a hundred years previously. Of course, if you scratch the surface, you don't even get to that high-minded ideal. More often than not, the perpetrators, when they are caught, talk about revenge, a supposed right to kill Turks. The hatred and callous disregard for human life required to plan and carry out these sorts of executions is scarcely imaginable. Yet again, Unfortunately for the Turkish community worldwide, such horrendous acts occurred over and over again. Australia was not an isolated example. And almost always, uh, investigative officials found that such acts had the support or at least the sympathy of a large proportion of the Armenian communities that were found in the places where they occurred. This particular act of terrorism, in the AFP's opinion, could not have been carried out and the perpetrators themselves could not have escaped without the substantial assistance from members of New South Wales Armenian community. These criminals remain at large. The Orly bomber, who tried to blow up a civilian aircraft with the loss of hundreds of lives, but managed instead to blow up the airline counter with the deaths of 20 civilians, once he was apprehended, uh, became a core celebre. France was shocked, not least because they had, uh, according to their own press, agreed to pass a motion recognising the events of 1915 as a genocide in exchange for an agreement with these terrorists that they would not carry out their acts on French soil. That didn't last, although the motion was passed. Once in jail, this terrorist was the subject of a petition signed by over one million Armenians living in Armenia demanding his early release. The French duly complied and he was given a hero's welcome in Yerevan. 
where even the president was there to congratulate him for his efforts. He went on to live the life of a national treasure. Then there's the so-called Lisbon Five, who took the Turkish ambassador's family hostage and lay high explosives all around the ambassadorial residence. Man they managed to kill the ambassador's wife, police officers and themselves when those bombs set, set off. These people are now venerated as national heroes. Members of the Armenian diaspora worldwide commemorate what they describe as this heroic act of sacrifice. This includes, I regret to say, commemorations in our own country, Australia, where I am sad to report members of our state and federal parliaments regularly attend and support. Epping resident, Mr. Demirian, decided in the 1980s to drive with an associate to Melbourne uh, having hatched a plan to blow up the office tower that housed the Turkish consulate. Their plan was to do that on a Monday morning when hundreds if not thousands of workers would be in that office tower. The bomb went off early. Demirian walked away and thankfully was apprehended. He now walks freely around the streets of Sydney and often hosts visiting Armenian dignitaries and MPs. Even Mr. Hovsepian, who many years before 9-11 conspired in a chilling reminder of what was to happen some years later, to hijack commercial aircraft and fly them into buildings in LA, with the CIA estimated a loss of some 3,000 civilian lives, is now free. Not only that, he is permitted to travel the world as a guest of various Armenian lobby groups, once again, including our own Armenian National Com Committee here. His job is to lecture Armenian youth about what they should be doing to further their cause. Uh, the Advocacy Alliance has, on many previous occasions, alerted Australian authorities to this man, his history, providing them with the uh, uh, case transcript and indeed with the now public CIA intelligence regarding him. He remains, however, a person who was perfectly able to obtain a visa, passing our character test, uh, to come to Australia and give lectures to our youth. This is not good enough. The two men who died on this spot in 1980 are no less worthy victims than the thousands of others who have died at the hands of terrorists around the world. We cannot and must not permit a hierarchy of condemnation for terrorist acts, and nor can we permit ever the sort of twisted reasoning that would seek to justify or explain away or mitigate particular terrorist acts. Neither the Consul General nor his assistant deserve to die for what someone else considered to be a worthy cause. They had a right to be safe and a right like each of us to be able to go to work and back to their families without armed gunmen killing them in front of those families. To forget these acts, to permit the justification of some terrorist acts whilst condemning others, that sort of moral relativism can only lead to the breakdown of our civil order and nothing less. Yes, it is true that there is a saying that one man's terrorist act, terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. However, deeper thinkers will immediately see the danger in the logic for all of us, particularly in a country like ours. Australia enjoys a wonderful multicultural society of which Turkish Australians have both benefited and contributed to. However, every ethnic and religious group has its own collective cultural memory. Often these include grievances against others. We cannot permit any language that would seek to excuse or to mitigate the gravity of any terror act because of some claimed justification arising from these historical and usually foreign grievances. Terrorist acts are, after all, an attack on us all, our way of life, our freedom, and our sense of security. We condemn them as we mourn these souls who, through no fault of their own, became the victims of such terrorist act. To the families of Mr. Ariak and Mr. Sever, I extend my deepest condolences. I pledge never to permit this vile act to be excused, let alone forgotten. I thank you once again for coming to show that this act and the sacrifice of these uh, two men has indeed, to this day, not been forgotten.
I trust that both of them now rest in peace. Mekhan Narajan, that's also.